Picture a rocket shooting into space. Is it a towering beast that dwarfs nearby buildings and palm trees? That makes sense. The rockets that go to the International Space Station and beyond are closer to the height of a roller coaster than they are to a house. But you don't have to be that large to get to space. Today, we're going to celebrate the smallest rocket to ever orbit the Earth, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's SS-520 No. 5. Launched back in 2018, its success could help usher in a new era of getting stuff where you want it, when you want it, but in space. Now, I know what you're thinking. That still looks pretty big to me. Well, you are a human. Probably. So even this tiny record holder is going to look large compared to you. The SS-520 No. 5 stands just 9.5 meters tall and 0.5 meters in diameter, but that means it's skinny enough to hug. Meanwhile, you could try hugging the likes of NASA's Space Launch System or SLS, which sent the Artemis 1 mission around the moon back in 2022, but it would probably feel more like you've just kind of smushed yourself up against the side of it. The enormous SLS is over 98 meters tall, which is over 10 of the SS-520 S520 number five rockets stacked on top of each other. And that massive difference in size all comes down to the job each is built to do. You can divide spacefaring rockets into three main types. Deep space rockets like the SLS use their extreme size to pack in a bunch of fuel and the super powerful engines needed to push people and cargo into, as the name suggests, deep space. Although NASA's idea of what deep space is might not match yours. The moon is considered deep space, which I mean, I guess. The closest relative to the SLS might be the Saturn V rocket, which took Apollo astronauts to the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s. And it was even larger at 111 meters tall. But groups around the world have launched rockets into deep space without these giants. Rockets like the Atlas V are built to carry scientific equipment, not people, so they can be smaller, around 60 meters tall. The most common rockets used today are orbital rockets. These take cargo, whether that's satellites or astronauts, into space with enough speed for them to stay in lower orbits around the Earth. The Russian Soyuz and SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets, famous for their trips to the International Space Station, are both orbital rockets. They're between 45 and 75 meters tall and are about half the diameter of the SLS. And that's still way too big to hug, at, at least if you're by yourself. So the SS-520 No. 5 is way smaller than the SLS, partly because it's only meant to send stuff into low Earth orbit, not deep space. But at 9.5 meters tall, it's also much smaller than typical orbital rockets. And that's because SS-520 No. 5 is actually a modified suborbital rocket. Suborbital rockets have enough oomph to get above the Kármán line, the arbitrary 100 kilometer height many scientists use to define the edge of space. But they don't go fast enough to stay in orbit around Earth. They fall back into the atmosphere as soon as their engines shut off. The team that built SS-520 number five was on a mission to construct the smallest, cheapest rocket that could launch a satellite into orbit. So they started with a tiny suborbital Japanese rocket called the SS-520. The SS-520 is a special kind of suborbital rocket called a sounding rocket. The sounding part of the name comes from maritime history, when sounding meant taking measurements. And today's sounding rockets do just that, hoisting scientific instruments into space for a few minutes to collect data. But to get their sounding rocket into orbit, the team needed to make two major modifications. First, it needed to fly much faster than it was designed to. Speed is a big part of what separates orbital and suborbital flight. A suborbital rocket needs to fly 6,000 kilometers per hour to reach a maximum altitude of 125 kilometers. But to actually achieve a 125 kilometer orbit, that same rocket would have to fly almost five times faster. In order to reach those eye-popping speeds, the team added a third set of rocket engines on top of the two that the regular SS-520 used. The second modification was that the rocket would need to make a turn at just the right time. Sounding rockets typically fly straight up to space and fall straight back down in a big U-turn shape. But to get into orbit, SS-520 No. 5 needed to fly straight up into space, then turn itself horizontally and accelerate. This was accomplished by adding a reaction control system between the first and second sets of rocket engines called stages. After the first stage had run out of fuel and was ejected, jets of nitrogen gas would not only help turn the rocket, but they'd also keep its position stable so it could hit those high speeds. These two tweaks turned SS-520 
into the SS-520 number 5. But the most important part was the cargo it carried into orbit. Nestled in the nose cone of that extra third stage was a teensy satellite called a CubeSat. CubeSats are standardized satellites built in dimensions called U. Each U is 10 centimeters square and weighs only 1.3 kilograms. Most CubeSats have three U sections and weigh four kilograms. They might be tiny, but CubeSats can do all sorts of things in space. When pointed at the Earth, they can help with everything from disaster response to climate monitoring. As part of the Artemis 1 mission, the Space Launch System carried 10 CubeSats and launched four of them into orbit around the Moon. Those satellites will look for water and hydrogen and help create maps of the lunar surface that NASA will use to plan future landings, like the Artemis 3 mission. The CubeSat that SS-520 No. 5 delivered into orbit carried both communications equipment and five small cameras that took pictures of the Earth for six months. But why bother with a small rocket that launches individual CubeSats? Big rockets like the SLS could carry many dozens of CubeSats to space at a time, especially if humans weren't also along for the ride. It's really handy that CubeSats can carpool with other missions, but it also limits where the CubeSats can go and when they can launch into space. Huge rockets like the Space Launch System take years to develop. If all you want to get to space is a single CubeSat for a short-term research project, a tiny rocket like the SS-520 No. 5 could be a really tempting future alternative. If they turn out to be financially viable, that is. In the meantime, we can hail the SS-520 No. 5 as the king of tiny space rockets. Huzzah! We think this tiny record holder is so nifty, we've made an even smaller version you can order today. The SS520 No. 5 is our pin of the month for all of July. Put it on your backpack, put it on your hat, put it on your official SciShow Space corkboard, which you can also get by going to dftba.com slash SciShow. Thanks for watching.